<clears throat> Hello, good morning, and thank you so much for making time. <clears throat> I can see things are beginning to heat up. Now that the main opposition, NDC, has settled on uh, former president and now candidate, uh, President John Dromani Mahama, uh, to represent it in the 2020 election. Um, the battle lines have almost been drawn uh, because, of course, the incumbent president is going unopposed, uh, barring any last minute surprises. Uh, from appointees or other, you know, party stalwarts that feel let, left behind or left out of government. And so 2020 is a foregone conclusion. It's going to be a duel uh, between the NDC's Pres Mahama or candidate Mahama and the MPP's uh, Pres Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. So, um, this issue of a leaked tape came just on the back of the flag bearer election uh, in, uh, of the NDC. And yesterday, a lot of incongruous communication went on, um, both from the NPP and the NDC. Um, certainly, when you have an era of digital media, an era of smartphones, it becomes very difficult to keep a secret when you are dealing with another person or a group of people. Uh, so from an internal, you know, mechanism point of view, the NDC and the MPP could make um, extra efforts to make some of these meetings that should be clandestine, watertight, uh, so that snippets bits and pieces of the information uh, does not come out. And so if it is about making it a no phone, no entry for phones, you know, engagement, if it's about using devices to make sure nobody has got a secret recorder on them, then I think as a part, you can also use a jammer. You can use a jammer that can jam all forms of devices that are recording, whether audio or visual. And so that is by way of uh, uh, advice or an opinion. Uh, because going forward, uh, this campaign that will lead us into the 2020 election will be replete with some of these leaks. Uh, so you would want to put a lid uh, and then make some of these meetings quite uh, watertight so that somebody doesn't record private conversations. Even though we look at the substance of what was discussed, whether it was a doctored tape or not, um, I think we are making a mountain out of a molehill. And this issue for me is a mundane issue. It's an issue that can be resolved without all the partisan noise that characterized the communication of both the NDC and the MPP yesterday. But what I'm going to discuss quite briefly is the use of semantics, the use of words that may discredit a candidate or boy that candidate, give the person, you know, an edge over their competitors. You see, when you are an untried and untested coach on the touchline, you can tell all the things a coach should do. Sorry? If the coach is on the touchline giving instructions and things seem not to be working, and you are a trained and certified coach sitting somewhere, you can make all the corrections and punch all the holes in the person's coaching skills. But it is different when the person coaches a team. The team plays at the group stage, for example. I'm drawing an analogy. The team plays at the group stage. 
wins the first match, draws in the second match, and loses the third match. Then you sit somewhere and say, oh, for the first match, well, it was a win, but we didn't deserve it. For the second match, I could have ensured a win instead of a draw. For the third match, I could have even won. Then we are told, okay, take over as the coach. Then in your case, your very first match, you have lost. We are yet to see this, how the second match will pan out and how the third match will pan out. It will be completely out of place. Having lost your first match or drawn in eight, to still be happening on, to still be happening on the fact that your predecessor, the coach, <laughs> was not fit for the job. So wait until you leave the group stage. Maybe you get to the one sixteenth stage. You get to the quarter final, final stage, or maybe the semi final stage. Then you can use any form of description for the coach that came before you. But your, the match just started. The match just started. And you've drawn or even lost your first match. So I would advise the MPP, when you were untried and untested before 2016, you could give all labels and tags to the government at the time and the president at the time. You called him incompetent, you called him corrupt, no, you called him incompetent, you called um, his appointees corrupt and all that. So that washed. That washed. But today, the use of the word greedy, I think it's too early to start using such a description. So stick to the issues. What are the issues? Discuss the issues with the good people of Ghana, a good majority of whom are electorates that can vote a party in or vote it out. Stick to the issues. These labels and tags may not wash again. Uh, so this is by way of advice, and I'm sure uh, everybody will take the right, you know, the cue, uh, will take a cue from this. Because if you you called Mahama this, you called him that, you called, that time you were untried and untested. But you are being tried and tested. And by some accounts, things aren't looking pretty good. Then you still go back to the same things you were saying, thinking that that would give you an edge. I doubt. Uh, so I, I think it's regrettable uh, that uh, a former president will still be called greedy. Please stick to the issues. And I urge both the NPP and the NDC to carry out a very uh, wholesome and healthy campaign uh, devoid of uh, the use of any such inflammatory language. And I assure people that God willing, if we happen to be alive and in good health, just as we did in 2016, we will work towards a peaceful election in 2020. And God willing, election 2020 will be more peaceful than election 2016. Thanks for your time.